Hello and welcome to my channel again. So before we continue with the training and I show you how to create the configurator part of this tutorial, I need to fix and help you with some things that happened in the previous video and how to correct those things, especially the course problem when loading models. So first I will show the problem and then I will show you how to correct it. Okay, so Let's start by loading another model here. I will just grab some other GLB file. This one is a helmet, as you can see. So I will do all the same process that I did on my previous. I will just change the intensity and make it more reflexive. So I will change some properties on this material like decreasing the roughness value i can get a more metallic looking in this helmet which is pretty good and it looking great so i would just turn off the ground because we don't need it for this scene and now i'm ready to go and this is the problem when you export here the asset so let's export this like it is exported to my class here just to rename it just helmet and let's jump into visual studio code let's change our model from the drill one that I, that we are using right now by this new one and let's see what happens so i will just change here helmet and then let's npm start and now I need to save the file first. As you can see, I forgot. And like it is there, it is working and I don't see any errors from the, from the console log. So everything worked as expected. But sometimes what you get is a coarse error because you use another uh, path, another file that is bringing the environment from a different place. So you see a bunch of errors here and you would see a black, everything black. So what happens is when the Frictionics viewer cannot find the environment, it looks like this. It's the same as you removing the environment image. So it will look like this, dark as this. So if this happens to you, all you have to do is to replace this environment map or something else, either from your computer or from a internet address that it is enabled to load files. What I do as a then for demo purposes, I upload files in a glitch environment or a code sandbox, whatever you, you want. So I will grab this HGR file, can be any HGR file you find over internet and you want to use. You upload it here on glitch and this will give me like a path so I can change inside my my GLB file on Pictronics. So you copy this URL here, then you go back to your environment settings and say it's from URL. And then you place that URL here. It will load the same texture, the same file, everything working. You export again this file here. And now use this file this new downloaded file with this new information on your project. So now nothing will change for us here. L2. Nothing will change because we are already getting locally the right result, but maybe when you load it like in a hosted environment, it can give you the, the course problem. So this is the path you can follow to change it. So I would just replace it here and then change here the loaded file. 
for the helmet to save it will not change anything here because it was previously working but now i'm pretty sure this will not give us any errors when we upload this to a server so this is how you correct the course problem and let's continue on the next step so i just brought back our drill here to continue our tutorial and some things have changed from the previous tutorial i recorded because the pictureatronics got an update a, like a huge one with a lot of new features i plan to describe all of them in our next tutorials but the most important ones was related to the clip background because like now you have this line here it is already like in our in our uh, i was using it twice so we all we already have this in our uh, repository for this tutorial here you can find the, the source files on my github page but this is important to add and you and you have this line on your side because this can guarantee that the background will be clipped even though if you not enable this on pictureatronic side now you can enable this by this line here so you can totally get the trans the background transparent on your files and also this line here is very important because it is disabling the the camera controls inside the 3js scene that Pictureatronics is using. If you do not use this line here, let's comment this out. What happens is that the GSAP will be fighting against the camera control with the file. So as you can see, the animation is very, very glitchy and looks like not smooth at all. So the magic line that makes this disappears is this line here. It is telling to the viewer to the active camera inside that scene to set the camera options and disable the controllers. It is the same as disabling the orbit controls on a default 3JS project. So, and now as you can see, it is very smooth, the animation. So if you were getting that strange problem, this is how you solve it. And other new line, which is important to observe, is this line here. So previously, we had a, like more lines telling the camera to the Pictureatronics camera to update its position and also the target. Now they have this new function here, so they can understand we are trying to update both at the same time with just this comment here. So. Like I said, the new repository, uh, the new version of this repository is already updated with these values and these new lines. But if you are watching this before the new version, or if you started with the previous tutorial with the first version of the Pictureatronics, you can, you should update like your project and use those new lines. And remember to also update your installation you need to make sure that in your packet.json your files are using the last version for the pictureatronics viewer if it is not you can use those two numbers here and reinstall your dependencies so you remove the packet lock json and also the node, node modules and then reinstall everything with npm install so you get a new fresh version of this with all these new functionalities working pretty good and now let's start by doing the configurator part of this tutorial and now let's create the configurator part of our tutorial what we want is to place like a button here it says like configurate or navigate or explore and then the user can take the control over the model again because now we are trying to avoid the controlling uh, by using the 
the scroll to interact with this model, but we can totally gain back control. So let me show the end of it. We'll, we will enable the controller again. So we will set this to true and we will get that strange behavior like that like jumping animation but what we want in the end is to like make all the sections display known also the footer to display known and we want to give the web gi canvas pointer events all so if we do this as you can see we can interact again with the model. So now we are not scrolling it anymore. We are taking control over the model. And this is exactly what we want. But we want to do this when we press a button. So th those are the properties we will, be, we will be changing when the user presses that button. So let's do it. I will start by adding another button on our HTML here. So I will copy this one and use this here and say like configure or customize would be better. And now we have a new button there that it says customize let's give another class here like button customize and now let's create the listener for it in our file here as we have this one that scrolls up we will copy all of this and say customize and let's only change the carry selector to this new button and let's see if we can uh, uh, we don't need to do all of this because we only have one button to add a different listener so we can do this like directly i think so no it is not i'll keep this as it is because i'm not ex that experienced with the TypeScript, but after this, I will change to be a, like a simplified one. It should be like this here, like this would be simpler. We don't need for each because I don't know why TypeScript is like complaining about it. Ah, because it is carry selector all. It needs to be carry selector. But TypeScript is very smart. So what we want is just console log to see if this is getting the element we want. So just console, let's say here, just to be able to see if it is right. Uh, it, it lost all the the look and feel because I changed the name, but it is there. So now I can get the the click on the button we want. Let's just add this new style to our button. It will be all the same. Like I said, you can do it differently. And like creating only one class to share the properties, I'm copying it here just to make it like faster. But now we get the look and feel again, and now we can console log what we need. So now what we need to do, we need to change the visibility to from all those things to none. So first we need to set this to false again on the start. But when we click on this button here, we want this to be true. And now to make things 
easier for us uh, we can just like embrace all the interface all the things we want to make invisible when we click on this button here embrace all of this with a container so this is what i'm going to do here i go all the way up here i will keep the navigation but we can embrace this if you want to also make the navigation more invisible but it's not the case for me so just make like this div here and now make everything except for the web gi viewer inside this div now it is embraced with a container i would just give this a class as a container and then nothing will change we can declare like a variable here like a const to have the se variable sections and the sections will be a carry selection looking for a container as an html element and now what we can do is sections dot style dot display equals none so let's see what happens what should happen is when we click on this button here everything disappears so it is working but i still cannot control the the viewer so the camera is enabled but the we need to change the pointer events uh container for the web gi viewer so i guess we already have like a viewer here that it is like a, our viewer let me see uh yes we can use this line here so it is creating now we can use like a different the same approach we are using here so we'll declare other other line uh looks let's look for the web gi canvas container i guess this is the one we need to change the the property let's just make sure of that so when we have here yes it is the container so in this one it says pointer events known if i change here to all we can control it so this is what we need to change uh, with javascript and typescript so this time i will not make a carry selector i will do uh, get element by id because it is using an id and not a class so this is the the id we need to look for so it would be like this i guess when we do this we don't need to place any symbols let me let's just rename this as main container or something else and then what we can do is main container dot style dot pointer events equals all and this should do the trick for us so it is working everything like nothing happening to the camera when we click customize everything is removed and now i can take control over the camera what i like to do is also to change the cursor to indicate the user that they can interact with this and not just keeping this cursor here and you can do it by just saying like document.body dot style dot cursor equals and we can use the graph so i guess now when we click on this button here as you can see the cursor has changed to the it is pretty good like it's looking pretty good so now we want to do is to add an interface here to be able to change either the texture or the camera or the colors everything you want to 
to change, to configure it, this, and also add an exit button because when we enter on this, we cannot scroll the page anymore. So we need to have another function to, to revert everything we did here to exit the customizer and then we can go back to the scrolling experience. Let's add the exit button to be able to go back to the scrollable experience. I'll do this by adding another button like the same one that we are using here. But I would just make another one here saying exit. Yes, let's give this like a different class. Like button exit. I can keep this one and just say button exit. Yes, because all the properties will be the same. We just need another class. We will not be able to see this because we need to change this class and this container here. So I guess we have this on our CSS file. Let's see. Yes, we have. Let's make this display flex. So probably we'll be able to see the button when we click yes so it is display flex now but it is wrong so what we need to change is the position this needs to be like vertically aligned and horizontally and then let's add this in the end of the of the interface and now for the button i will just make this new class like a with a of let's say 200 it will be too much can be like way much smaller than this and i guess it needs to be yeah align item center we don't need this one here so we can copy all these properties, all these declarations to paste it here. And also for this new button, the button exit will be this width and a margin button to be like 5%. Yeah, I guess 5 is okay. So take this and then let's create button exit here. double dash yes so it is saved now when you refresh i will still not be able to see because we need to press here to be able to see the button but it is there from the beginning of the experience which is just not visible yet so what we can do now is just create like a click to this button using the same technique we created here so i will replicate all of this say exit customizer uh, the sections we don't need because they are the same also the container it is the same yes it is like still declared here we need to search now for the button exit here and now we need to revert everything so make this false make this display flex make pointer events none again and make the cursor default so i guess if everything is okay when we press here you enter when you press exit you cannot press because i guess we need to change the z index for this button here let's see five yeah let's add the z index here on the class for this button five i think it is okay and now when we press here we can control we can click on this when we click exit 
the problem is like the previous default for the container main container is not display flex it is display block so we need to correct this to be able to get the previous behavior so okay when we press exit everything is okay again it is working right now the animation is very quick so when you press customize it just jumps right out the the animation so if you want to make this a smooth transition with a camera movement this is easy so all you have to do is to grab this those two as an example they are moving the camera and the target at the same time remember but they are doing it by using the scroll trigger as the trigger for the animation so this time what we can do like when we click customize we can do the animation but using just the plain gsap not using scroll trigger so we can remove this one and we can also add a gsap here and also remove the scroll trigger for this one and in this case i will be on update on both because they can run on different i'm not creating a timeline for this one i'm creating like two animations at the same time and the values you can place here you can grab from the pictureatronics viewer so let's do it together again i will just find the file we are using right now which is here let's open the editor and let's find a good camera position for this new situation so i will just drag the model here I guess I need to open on my viewer, yeah, on my finder. So we want another position. We want F click after clicking on customize. Let's see. Let's say we want this position. Like so, I position the camera, animations, camera views, add current view, and now we we have the values for this new situation. So let's change here. We want the position to be minus 2.6, y 0 0.2, and z to minus 9.6. And for the target, it will be minus 0 0.15, 1.5, 1.15. And we need some extra information here. We need the duration for both of, of them. So we have the duration of, let's say, two seconds. And also an easy function that can be power three dot in out. All of this we can find on the GSAP documentation. But as you can see, with those two simple lines, when we now click on the customize button, an animation will happen and then you can see the result. You can also do the same for the exit. I will not be doing this just to make things like simpler here. But as you can see, we have a problem. When we click on customize, we already like enabled the camera. As so as you can see the animation is jumping so to avoid that well, all you can do is to call another function like on complete and call like enable controllers a function this function we have to create it so let's create it here And now all we can do is only enable this 
when the animation finishes. So let's see if it works. Customize like a charm. So you can see like those jumping animations anymore. And with this, we complete this part of the tutorial. For the next part of it, we will have some buttons here to change the colors for the for our drew but it is looking pretty good i hope you like it and see you in the next part of this tutorial thank you very much for sticking with me and again forgive me for my bad english but i hope this tutorial can help you see you bye bye